Well, good morning. It's good to be in God's house. Amen. Amen. Good to see each one of your bright and smiling faces. Listen to the word of the Lord coming from the book of Psalm, chapter number 116. And the psalmist writes this, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he tuned, excuse me, turned his ear to me. I will call upon him as long as I live. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's stand this morning. Let's go before the Lord in a word of prayer. And yes, we came to church. Yes, we came to worship the Lord. But let's worship Him because we love Him. No other agenda except, God, we love you and we want to praise your name. Father, we give you thanks and praise for today. Thank you for allowing us to be in your house. And Lord, we just want to start by saying we love you. God, we love you from the depth of our heart. We ask you, Lord, that you would just be pleased with our worship. We ask you, Father, that you will help us to put aside the things that are coming, the things that were, and Father, we will fix our eyes on you. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory and honor, and we do it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And let's worship this morning. Hallelujah.
We need to live like the tomb of Jesus Christ is empty. Yes. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter number 139. I'm going to read the whole chapter, so just bear with me. We can't get too much scripture. Amen. Psalm 139, beginning in verse number 1. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know me when I sit and you know me when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before, before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You've laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night shall shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would, be out, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O oh God. Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. I do not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and I abhor those who rise up against you. I have nothing but hatred for them. I cannot, excuse me, I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me to the way everlasting. God, these are your words, not my words. And as David penned these words, they're your words, not his words. This is who you are. Lord, would you illuminate the scriptures this morning? Would you bring clarity? Would you make them, would you allow them to come alive in our spirit today? That when we leave, we'd be completely different than when we came in. Change us and transform us by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, this Psalm 139 is a psalm that if you struggle from time to time with who you are in Christ, this is a great psalm to kind of come back to, a great psalm to read and remember, a great psalm to meditate on. To think about throughout the day. Don't just read it and then say, wow, that's awesome. But to meditate on it. To, as I like to say, chew on it all throughout the day. And really allow the word to permeate into the very depths of your spirit. So that you and I might come to understand, truly understand, who God is and how he feels about us. 
When we're tempted to say, God, you don't love me, God, you've removed your hand, God, you don't understand, God, you don't, God, you don't, God, you don't, we can go back to this psalm as David wrote, and, and we can be reminded of who God really is and how God really feels about you. And we need to be men and women that read the whole Word of God. But, you know, we have those portions of Scripture that when we're struggling with an issue, when we're struggling in a particular situation or circumstance, we run to, don't we? We, we, we do that. Maybe you don't. I do. I have a few Scriptures. Man, if I'm battling this situation, I go to this particular Scripture to be able to receive comfort or encouragement or just be reminded of who God is in that circumstance or situation. I love verse number 11. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will, be not, will not be dark to you, O God. How many of you have ever experienced some darkness? Well, guess what? It's not darkness to the Lord. It's only darkness in our perception. But it's not darkness to Him. And I rejoice in that. You should rejoice that the darkness that you might feel is not the darkness that God is experiencing. And I could go through and break down and dissect several of these verses just like that. The, the, the richness and the meat that is in this portion of, of, of Scripture for you and I to, do, to digest is just phenomenal. To grab a hold, I praise you, God, in verse number 14. Because I am fearfully... And wonderfully made. You have doubts, you have self esteem issues, come back and read Amen. this portion of scripture because you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Last week we talked for a, a, a period of time in, in the message and looked at the portion of scripture in Exodus when God is speaking to Moses and the Israelites and they find themselves with the Red Sea on one side and Pharaoh and his army chasing from behind and we pointed out there's three things that we need to do is remember God has a purpose, remember God always makes provision and then we can watch the power of God on display as he comes through in those moments. And talking about how hope causes us to move forward. And we use that story because in the moment, for that brief moment, the Israelites seemed hopeless with the sea on one side and Pharaoh's army on the other. And yet God said, stop crying, it's time to move on. I'm reminded of when Moses passes away and Joshua takes the baton of leadership. And, and in the very beginning of Joshua, I don't know if it's the first verse, but it's within those first couple. He says, stop crying, Moses is dead. It's time to move forward. It's time to keep going. Yes, they took their time and mourned, and they should have. They needed to. It was not only right in the sight of God in terms of what he allowed for that time of mourning, but they needed to in the human capacity as well. I just talked to someone a, a few days ago that doesn't uh, go to our church or attend our church, and they were upset about something that had happened. They felt slighted. They felt hurt. And it, and it had not just happened that one time. That was the most recent, but it had happened time and time and time again. And they said, you know, I know I just need to suck it up and move forward. And, and there's, to a degree, there was some truth in that statement. There comes a time where we do have to stand up and we have to brush off the dirt and the ashes, and we need to take that step forward. But we need to take time and allow the Lord to heal our heart, too. And so I said that to this individual as, as, as we were conversing on the telephone. And I said, yeah, there's some truth to that. But if you haven't allowed the Lord to minister to your heart... Don't just stand up and move forward. Because all that allows to happen is we just push that aside, create a mindset within ourselves that we're over it, and then the next time we get hurt, it just rears its ugly head and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. We have to allow the Lord to heal our heart, but there comes a time in the healing process when we have to stand up, stop crying, and move on. Amen. 
Now, we, we're not seeing those specific words and those phrases in this portion of Scripture, but the Word of God is all intertwined. You say, well, what's the tie in? What's the connection? Last week, excuse me, I got just a sip of water, excuse me. Last week during our worship service, if you were here, you're watching online, or you caught the, the replay of it, the Lord spoke to us. I don't know if you remember that or not, but the Lord spoke in the middle of our worship service. And I didn't write down every word, but this is what the Lord said. Put your hope in me. Put your trust in me. Not in other things, not in the world, but hope is found in me. Amen. That, that was the meat of what the Lord spoke to us last week. We were singing about hope. We were talking about hope. And then the Lord spoke to us. How many know the Lord still speaks, church? Amen. Some people don't believe that. Some denominations don't teach that. I believe that the Lord still speaks. He is still moving. He is still drawing people unto himself. And he does that in very different ways. But one of the ways he does that is by speaking directly to us. Let me push the pause button on that thought for just a moment. I want to encourage you. When we are gathered together in this assembly, when we are gathered together on a Sunday morning, if you're feeling prompted of the Lord... If you're feeling like you need to share something, like God is, 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 wants to use you in that way, I want to encourage you to take that step. I want to encourage you. Now, that can be a little scary, especially if you've never been used that way. But, you know, 1 Corinthians talks about the gifts that God has for the church and the word of knowledge and a prophetic word, speaking in tongues with interpretation and healing and power and discernment, and, and they're all listed in there. And sometimes God desires to do that in our midst. I wish He'd do it every Sunday, but He's God and He knows what He's doing, but that's my heart's desire. But He uses you and I to do that. Amen. And so I just want to encourage you if you're feeling that, and believe me, if the Lord's stirring, you'll know it. You'll know it. But I would encourage you to take that step. I'll go as far as to say this. If you've never been used and you're feeling like, oh Lord, I don't, I don't want to make a mistake, I'm not sure. Take the step of faith and speak or say what the Lord is prompting you. And if you make a, a mistake, there is grace to cover that mistake. There is no judgment. I would much rather you speak and you made a mistake than for you, God desired to use you as a mouthpiece and you hold it in and rob the church of what God wanted to do in that moment. So if you want to speak about that, if you have any questions, come and see me, reach out to me during the week. But I just, I just believe that God is creating an atmosphere where he wants to speak. I, I can feel his presence when we're worshiping on Sunday mornings. I, I can feel the spirit moving. I, I know he's working. One, Scripture says he's here because two or three are gathered in his name, but I sense his spirit moving, and he's desiring to take us deeper places. Anyway, so that, that's, my, that's my advice, not my advice, that's my encouragement to you. If you're feeling that, take that step of faith. If you're unsure, reach out to me. Real quick, one time somebody called me midweek and said, Pastor, I have a confession. What's your confession? When somebody says that, I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going to ready to come out. I was supposed to speak something this past Sunday, and I didn't. And listen, no judgment there. I, I encourage that person, first of all, thank you for recognizing, thank you for reaching out, and then let's pray and ask God to use you again. Because church, he's looking for willing vessels. He's looking for willing vessels. 
I believe that you and I are the conduit for when God wants to work. And if we will allow God to use us and, and do that thing, he's going to continue to fill up so that we can do it again. I believe he'll do it when you're obedient to be used to the gifts of the Spirit. I believe he'll do it with regards to giving. I believe he'll do it in, in regards to evangelism and reaching out. You and I can be the conduit for which God's work. And when we do what God has charged us, asked us, or prompted us to do, He'll continue to fill you up to be able to do it some more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He just needs the willing vessels. And the Old Testament prophet says, Here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, God, use me. If that's not the desire and the place of your heart, then I would encourage you to reach out to the Lord and ask Him to forgive you and begin to pray that prayer. God, here I am. Use me. <coughs> Getting back to last Sunday and the word that the Lord spoke. You know, we sang the songs about hope during worship. The message was about hope. And the Lord spoke a word about hope. And as I began to process that, as I began to chew on that, as I began to think about that, as I even began to dialogue about that, I believe it's because the Lord's saying the church needs to put their hope in me. The church... Listen, that word that the Lord spoke wasn't for the church across the street. It wasn't for the church down the road. That word that the Lord spoke was for life spring. That, that word was for life spring. There are times when the Lord speaks in this context, and it's for, you know, context is out, a context outside of these walls. But last week, that message was for this church. This is for you and you and you and you and you and, and me and for each one of us. Let's dissect that for a moment. What does that mean? That maybe our hope isn't in the Lord like we think it is. Maybe our hope is in the Lord sometimes and not at other times. Maybe our hope in the Lord is in this situation, but not in that situation. Maybe, and, and we could give several others, but if God spoke it, there's a reason. There's a purpose. God's not our cheerleader in heaven, although I believe he's cheering us on, but in those moments, God is not our cheerleader in heaven. He spoke for a purpose. You know, in our house, there's a lot of noise sometimes, right? Seven kids, two adults, but it can be quite noisy sometimes. Some people, that drives them crazy. For us, that's just normal. That's life. And, and my wife and I, you know, we, we engage in some of that conversation, but there comes a point where if one of us needs to be heard, right, the tone changes a little bit, right? And then every, all of a sudden everybody's like, ooh, shh, you better listen. Right? Shh, be quiet. So one, one kid doesn't get that memo or still cracking jokes, and somebody else gives them the elbow to the kid. Oh, what'd you do that for? The mom and dad are talking. God speaks, we better listen. Amen. When God speaks, we better listen. That's why I instruct the worship team, if somebody speaks out and stop playing, we should listen. And not just listen so that we can acknowledge He's speaking, but listen intently so that we can allow His word to permeate into our spirit. Church, that word was for you and I. That means we need to make sure our hope is in Him. Not just in word, but in belief and in action. Not just in this public context, but when we go home. When the phone rings. When the boss calls us into the office. When the kids get the detention. But whatever the kids... We've got to put our trust in Him in every circumstance, in every situation, in everything that we see, in everything that we do. Our hope has got to be in Jesus Christ. 
And sometimes we pray about things, situations, whether they're personal in our own life, whether it's a cultural or societal problem or issue or whatever it is. And sometimes we don't see the difference. We don't see the answer. But we can't stop. We can't be hindered by that. We can't act as if God's not listening. Because listen, if we allow those things to, to, to debilitate us, to render us useless, our hope is not in Jesus. That might be a hard word. You might be a little offended I said it. And that's certainly not the intent. But I believe that's the heart of God. That's where trust comes in. That's where faith kicks in. Even when I don't see God working, I'm going to pray according to his word. And he says he moves. Amen. Amen. That's why we say our hope is not in the healing. It's in the healer. Amen. It's not our hope is not in the answer. Our hope is in the one who provides and gives the answer. Yes. Our hope is not in salvation. It's in the one who paid the price. For our salvation. Amen. Amen. So where's the sticky point? Can we be real and raw this morning? Even if you say no, it's still yes. <laughs> Just ask because it feels nice. Can, can we, but seriously, can we get real and raw? Because that's really what I feel like we need to do this morning. Sometimes we have difficulty moving forward in the hope of Jesus Christ that he purposes. We know he has provision. We know that there's purpose. We know his power will be on display, but yet we still hesitate. We still stumble. Sometimes we sit down and refuse to move. And I believe... The Lord showed me that part of the answer is wrapped up in verses number 23 and 24 of this scripture. Verses number 23 and 24. I'm reading out the NIV 1984. Your words might be a little different. That just means you're reading out a different version. It's still saying the same thing. Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Now I have two things that I want to bring out very quickly. The first one is just a quick thing. And the second one I want to dive into and dig into just a little bit. Verse number 23, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. If you take the scripture, Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18, if you read that, if you meditate on that, when I say meditate, I'm not talking about some Eastern world weird thing. I'm talking about you just think about it. You allow the word to take residence in your mind, chew on it, think about it, process it in the context of God's word. That's what meditation means in this context. That's what meditation means throughout the scripture. If we meditate on God's word, if we think about it, then I can't have anxious thoughts. if I really fully grasp who Jesus Christ is, who God is, and who he created me, and how he created me. Anxious thoughts don't have place in my body and in my mind if I can truly comprehend who God is and how he created me. Search me, God, and know my heart. I believe most of us have pure intentions and motives in our heart. I don't think any of us is walking around, you know, in, in, in improper ways. Our desire is to live out the word of God. But sometimes we think it or we 
it's a passing thought, and then we go back to it, and we think about it, and then we allow that to be meditating in our heart. Well, what if, or how come, or, and, and, and then we get off course. God says, or excuse me, David says, test me. Know my anxious thoughts. Verse number 24 says, see if there's any offensive way in me. My heavens. David, you're going a little deep here. First he says, search me, test me, and then he says, see if there is any offensive way. The New Living Translation, if you think that one's bad, I just read, listen to what the New Living Translation says. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Point out anything in me that offends you. Matthew Henry in his commentary, and I'm not quoting him, but I'm giving you the idea, says that the cry and deepest desire of David's heart was that God would put a window on the breast of his body so that those around could see the true condition of David's heart. What would happen if God replaced our chest cavity with a window into our heart that others might be able to see what's in there? We wear 25 layers and never come out of our house. Imagine that, though, for a moment. Just, just think about that. If you were walking and people could see what was inside our heart, your heart, my heart. Now, that's not Scripture, but that's Matthew Henry's take on David's heart when he writes that. But think about that for a moment. God put a window that others might see into the condition that my heart truly is. The ESV version says, see if there be any grievous way in me. King James says, see if there's any wicked way. You get the idea and the context, I think, as I read these couple of different translations of what this verse says. But if we go back and we study the Hebrew word of that word, wicked or offense, if we take that word and we go back to the original text, the original Hebrew word is osev, and it means an earthen vessel idol that causes pain and separation. An earthen vessel idol that causes pain, separation. That could be physical pain, it could be mental anguish, and it could be in a spiritual context as well. An earthen vessel. An earthen vessel is something that you and I create. Sometimes with our literal hands, or sometimes something that is man-made that we allow to become the idol. And it causes separation. Wicked way. Separation from God. And that separation always causes pain, church. Always causes pain when we're separated from our Creator. When we take Him from His rightful place as King of our heart and we put in something else and make that the idol. If we read that verse in context with its definition instead of what, how it's actually written, it says this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any earthen vessel idol in me that causes pain and separation and lead me in the way everlasting.
And as I began to chew on that this week, as I began to think, as I began to meditate, as I began to study, I felt like the Lord showed me this is why we can't move forward. This is why we have trouble grasping God's provision, His plan, and seeing His power. Because we've allowed something else to come in and cause separation in our relationship. Am I saying you're all backslidden and going to hell? No. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you're having struggles moving forward, there might be something that has taken top spot. There might be something that has dethroned the king. There might be something that is causing separation and pain. And that's why David says, search me, O oh God. Search me. Oh God, he takes it one step deeper and he says, test me. It doesn't mean test me like see if I'll stay true or see if I will mess up. That's not the context of the word. When he says test me, he says search me. It means look upon me. That word test actually translates to deeply examine me. So search me. If I look out, I'm searching for my Bible, I'm searching for my car keys, I'm looking to see if I can find them. But then he says, God, test me, which really means deeply examine. With each phrase, he is getting deeper and deeper with the Lord. God, search my heart, look around, is there any offensive way? Is there anything impure? Is there anything unholy? God, deeply search me. Intensely search me. Do you know why that David says that? Because church sin and holiness cannot reside together. Sin and holiness cannot reside at the same time. God calls you and I to be holy. God calls you and I to be righteous, to be in right standing. That is nothing that we can do on our own. It only comes from God. It only comes from the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that is exciting. Amen. And as we get ready to close it, though, it brings us back to the uncomfortable question. What's the earthen vessel idol that may have found its way into our heart, to your heart, to my heart? Maybe the word that God spoke wasn't for you, but we better, better not just pass it off as God speaking to someone else. It's easy to do. I remember sitting in church one time, and, and we're going to get ready to close, so whoever's going to come up on the platform can start making their way. But I remember sitting in church one time as a new believer. I was in college, and somebody said, hey, let's go to church. And I said, oh, okay. And so we went to church, and we're sitting there in the church, and we're listening to the pastor. And, and he said something. I don't even remember what it was, but I remember saying to myself, ooh, I hope so-and-so is listening. How many of you have ever been guilty? Now, man, come on, be real. Sure, we all have, I would assume. Many hands going up. I remember that. And so we went out to, we, we, church is over, we get back to campus, and we go to the dining hall, and we have some, some lunch, and, and, and we were talking about church, and we were talking about the service. And somebody said to me, and that same thing that the pastor said, they said to me, I thought to myself, boy, I hope John's listening. And I said, hey! I, I, I said at the same time, I hope you're listening. And we had a good laugh over that. That's pretty funny. I think sometimes as believers, we're quick to say, I hope somebody else is listening. Boy, I really hope my wife was listening to that. Boy, I really hope my husband was listening to that. Boy, I hope my kids are listening to that. We're so busy hoping somebody else heard what God said, we miss the fact that God said that for me. God said that for you. Would you stand with me as we close?
David said, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. God already knows your heart this morning, church. As I was praying over this verse of scripture, I felt like the Lord said to me, when was the last time you asked me? And you know in my humanness in the moment is going to be a little lighthearted, but a completely 100% serious at the same time. I said, Lord, this is for the people. Not for me. I said, no, it's for you. Would you close your eyes and die again? And I wonder this morning as we stand here in this moment that you would offer the same prayer request to the Lord. God, would you search me? God, would you intensely look into the condition of my heart. Because he knows your thoughts. He knows your desires. God, would you see if there is any offensive way in us this morning? Not for our spouse, not for our kids, not for the person or people sitting in the next chair cluster over, but our heart. God, my heart, our individual heart. God, is there anything that is offensive? Is there anything that has become an idol that is separating us from you, God? Oh, Jesus. Because, Lord, if there is, would you show it to us? Would you show us, God, so that we can ask you to forgive us and then we can cast the idol out. We can get rid of it. We can lay it at your altar so you can destroy it. And then, Father, help us to elevate you back to the place that you desire to be. If you want to step out of your seat and find a way to the altar, you are invited and welcome to do that. Sometimes it's easy to stay where we are. And sometimes taking that step is a good symbolic moving forward. Moving on. But either way, church, would you call out this morning? Would you take a moment or two and say, God, search my heart. God, intensely look around and see if there is anything inside of me that is displeasing. If there's anything, God, that is going on that is contrary to your word, that is contrary to your desire, that is contrary to your plan for my life. God, if there's anything there, Lord, show it. I want to move forward. Jesus. Oh, God. As you pray that prayer this morning, maybe the Lord is showing you something. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. But ask him for forgiveness. Ask him to forgive you of that. Maybe the idol is something big. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your vehicle, your house. But church, maybe the idol isn't able to be seen with human eyes. Maybe the idol is fear. Maybe the 
idol is something you've seen and you've heard.